M S W Media. Thanks to Avast for supporting the Daily Beans. With Avast One, you can confidently take control of your online world by helping you stay safe from viruses, phishing attacks, ransomware, hacking attempts, and other cybercrimes. Learn more about Avast One at avast.com. Hello and welcome to the Daily Beans for Tuesday, October 25th, 2022. Today, the Justice Department is putting the squeeze on Walt, Nada, and Kosh Patel in the Mar-a-Lago documents investigation. Justice Thomas temporarily blocks Lindsey Graham's testimony in the Fulton County Special Grand Jury investigation into 2020 election interference. Pete Navarro has filed a hilarious motion in opposition to the Department of Justice's writ of replevin. Donald is a possible witness in the Trump Organization criminal trial, which started today. And we get to dust off the Fantasy Indictment League. I'm Allison Gill. And I'm Dana Goldberg. Hi, Dana. I missed you. Hello. I missed you, too. How was the White House? Quit bragging. Oh, well, I just couldn't. I mean, Ron Klain and Doug Emhoff just wanted to keep taking selfies with me. It was why would it was a they? bit much? It was a bit much. No, it was absolutely amazing. It was so fun. The second gentleman seems like a mensch. He is so awesome. And I tell you what, they did their research or they, you know, I mean, they knew who we were. They knew who I was. That's fantastic. Of course yeah. they did. You're one of the reasons that all of this was happening with it anyway. And when I, you know, when I, I said to tell POTUS and the SECDEF, thank you for making the changes at the Pentagon with regards to travel for abortion care. And he's like, yeah, you're the one who wrote that op-ed, right? And then they knew who that, you know, we had a, I'm a veteran with a secret podcast that was fired by Trump for, you know, for the Mueller She Wrote podcast. It was, it was really interesting and, and very, very fun to meet them. And so the reason we were there is we were just getting some policy briefings. They, we were just invited voluntarily that, you know, nobody paid us. We didn't get, to, we didn't pick up our Soros money at the deep state <laughs> information desk. But we were just there. We got some policy briefings about the amazing things that are being done and have been done under the under the Biden agenda. So that's basically what, what we were there for. No, well, it's a lot of influencers on social media and a lot of people who have a big reach. So they were smart to have you all there. So it was super fun. We called it Twitter prom. That's what we called it. Oh, that's funny. And I just wanted to announce that we are now doing a weekend show, a weekend Daily Beans. It's a weekly wrap up where I just come on and I tell you about the news for the week and I talk about the trends that I saw, what seemed to be coming up more often than not. And then I talk about what we're going to cover in the, you know, the the following week. So, you know, with you, Dana, so it's going to be awesome. It's just for patrons. It's a full, full episode. Everybody was asking, you know, they say they miss their beans on the weekend, the Illuminati. So we are answering with a bonus episode for patrons to become... Ask and you shall receive. Mm-hmm. We are very interactive here at The Daily Beans. And uh, if you aren't a patron, you can become one by going to patreon.com slash The Daily Beans or patreon.com slash Muller She Wrote. You get all the bonus content. You'll get early access to VIP and meet and greet and pre-sale tickets for when, when uh, we go on tour. And... Uh, what else do you get for ad free feed? You get the premium feed plus this bonus episode and the bi monthly Q and A happy hours that happen every Friday, which I love. So thank you so much. And if you can't swing it, there are people who have gone out of their way to donate an entire year for those who can't afford to do it. It's 36 bucks to do that. We have several people who donate. We have several people who sign up on the list to get a donated subscription premium subscription. So that will get you the bonus content too. You can sign up there. Everything is at dailybeanspod.com. Just uh, scroll down and look for patrons helping patrons. Dean, a couple of quick news things. Navarro filed a brief, a, a motion to dismiss the government's replevin, writ of replevin, right? Which is basically he wrote a bunch of emails about ivermectin and, and you know, injecting bleach on a private proton mail account. And the National Archives is like, those are presidential records. Give it to us. And he's, <laughs> and he's like, but if I do, I could inculpate myself in the subcommittee on coronavirus's investigation because they subpoenaed me for these documents and I may or may not have given them over. And, and they're like, we don't care. They're not yours. You can't 
you you can't not. You don't get to decide where they go and where they don't go. Right. Yeah. It's hilarious. It's like, well, if I give you the money back from the bank I robbed, that would be admitting that I robbed the bank. (laughs) Basically. Yeah, you dumbass. So we'll see. We'll see how the court responds. It's an interesting argument. We go over it in detail on tomorrow's cleanup on aisle 45. This next little tidbit that's about to come out of your mouth is pissing me off, but continue. Mm, I knew. I know. It's pissing off a lot of people. I'm not too concerned about Justice Clarence Thomas's stay on Lindsey Graham's testimony in Fulton County, Georgia. That is a very normal thing to do. The stay is a couple of days. It lets Lindsey exercise his right to appeal. If there wasn't a stay in place, his appeal would be moot. And that's taking someone's rights away, which I'm not okay with. Absolutely. But <laughs> something however, else I'm, however, comma, something else I'm not okay with is Clarence Thomas deciding anything on this fucking case at all. He should be recused. I know he is the justice that sits atop uh, the, what is it, the 11th Circuit, which is where this f- lawsuit is. But he, it, that doesn't mean that you can't recuse. It doesn't seem to be in his vocabulary, the word recuse. This is a case of, uh, that could involve information about his wife. I was going to say, I would not be shocked if Lindsey Graham and Jenny Thomas had a text exchange or several that day. Yeah, and the fact or that the Supreme up Court it. Justice's wife is involved in a fucking coup is a problem. I don't understand why this isn't a bigger deal. 100%. But anyway, that was a heck of a pre little, you know, pre hot notes discussion because we haven't even gotten to the podcast, people. (laughs) Strap in. Here we go. It's a big day. Uh, Everybody, let's hit the hot notes. Hot notes. All right. This is breaking news. Federal prosecutors investigating the former guy and his handling of national security documents that he stole from the White House have ratcheted up pressure in recent weeks on key witnesses in the hopes of gaining their testimony. And that's according to two people briefed on the matter, probably these two people's lawyers. <laughs> the, <laughs> the effort by the Justice Department shows how the investigation is entering a new phase as prosecutors seek to push recalcitrant witnesses to cooperate with them. A key focus for prosecutors is Walt Nauta, a little-known figure who worked in the White House as a military valet, probably the guy who cleaned up the ketchup, I'm not sure, And he was a cook also when Trump was president. He probably didn't cook much since they would just really ordered a lot of hamburgers. But I think he might have been hamburgers. I hamburgers. I think he might have been the Diet Coke valet. Oh, just bring him in five, six, seven a day. Yeah, he had a Diet Coke button on his desk. Yep. Donald did. Which I think is a cool idea. But no, it's not actually. I was trying to like justify why that's cool. It's absolutely. I, cool. I saw that your head trying to do that. And I was you like, see, nope, it's not, it's not good for you. Yep, spinning. all of it. Yeah. All of it. <laughs> I'm like, I can't think of a single thing. Uh, so yeah. So even when I try to find uh, good things about the former guy, I simply can't. Trump was president. This is at this time. And, and later, Nada worked for Trump personally at Mar-a-Lago when he left the White House as a valet. Now, prosecutors have indicated they're skeptical. Skeptical of an initial account Mr. Nada gave investigators about moving documents stored at Mar-a-Lago and are using the specter of charges against him for misleading investigators to persuade him to sit again for questioning. So what that translates into is you fucking lied to us the first time. We saw the videotape. Now we're going to charge you with obstruction unless you come in and tell us the truth. (laughs) Yep, he's in a lot of trouble. (laughs) He he could be in, in, in quite a bit of trouble. At the same time, the prosecutors are trying to force Cash Patel to answer questions before the grand jury about how the documents were taken to Mar-a-Lago and how Trump, his aides and his lawyers dealt with requests from the government to return them. That's according to a person briefed on the matter. Mr. Patel refused to answer many questions this month already before a grand jury in Washington. So this wasn't an interview. This was fucking this was the grand jury. Hearing evidence about Mr. Trump's handling of the documents, he cited his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination, and that's according to a person briefed on the matter. In response, prosecutors asked a top federal judge in Washington to force Patel to testify. It's got to be Judge Beryl Howell. She's in charge of 
grand juries. And they asked this judge to, to force Patel to testify, a move fought by Patel's lawyers who are concerned the government wants to use Patel's own statements to incriminate him, which says to me in loud screaming letters, Patel's attorneys are the sources for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. CNN reported Thursday that Patel had appeared before a grand jury. The efforts to gain the testimony of Nada and Patel demonstrate how department officials will have to make decisions in the coming weeks and months about whether to charge the witnesses, offer them cooperation agreements, grant them immunity, or give up on trying to obtain their testimony. I think it's important to note here, this is a, a Michael Schmidt article in, in the New York Times, but if the DOJ is trying to force Patel to testify, that seems to me like they're trying to get a cooperation agreement going or they're offering him use immunity because you can't force someone to give up their Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. So I'm not quite sure what that is. But Mike Schmidt says here that prosecutors are loath to give witness. Well, he says prosecutors loathe giving witness immunity, but I say prosecutors are loath to give witnesses immunity, particularly in high profile cases, because it makes it significantly more difficult to prosecute the individual according to legal experts. Instead, prosecutors favor entering cooperation agreements in which the witness agrees to answer investigators' questions in exchange for not being charged or a recommendation for a shorter prison sentence. But you can't go to a judge to force a cooperation agreement. So I think there might be a, a bit of immunity being offered here, but that's just a guess. As long as someone else bigger, as long as a bigger fish goes down for all this, I'm good. I'm good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, Trump, yeah, Trump is the bigger fish, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yep. He's a flounder. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I mean. an albatross. I'm a tremendous albatross. Speaking of the flounder, jury selection began Monday morning in the Trump Organization's trial on New York state criminal fraud charges. Mm. And the judge told potential jurors that the former guy could be called as a witness in the case. I guess that's one way to find out if you need to weed out your jury. Now, the company was indicted by a grand jury in July of 2021. It faces 14 counts related to allegations it provided untaxed, quote, indirect employee compensation to executives, the high-end perks, which included at least one case, an apartment, and two luxury cars, were described as, quote, secret pay raises at the expense of state and federal taxpayers. That was by a prosecutor at a hearing last year. The company has denied wrongdoing, which is so funny, and has pleaded not guilty, also hilarious, to all the charges Trump has not been personally charged in this case, though. We know this by the Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg. And he's a Democrat, regardless of that, whose office is prosecuting the case. He said that he remains under investigation. So he's still under investigation there. Mm. Now, as proceedings got underway at the courthouse in Lower Manhattan, the judge said potential witnesses in the case may include Donald, his children, the crotch fruit, Donald Jr., Eric Trump and Ivanka, and his former personal lawyer, Michael Cohen which is really interesting because I think Michael, who suddenly found Jesus on our side, may seem like a fucking bird uh, at this point. But among the other witnesses expected to be called by the government, one's former Trump Organization Chief Financial Officer Alan Weisselberg, uh, who in August entered a guilty plea in this case. They thought he was going to give more information. I don't know why they trusted that. But mm -hmm. Weisselberg's deal with the prosecutors calls for a sentence of five months in New York's Rikers Island Jail, followed by five years probation. He's also going to have to pay $1.9 million in back taxes and fines and testify under oath as a witness in the company's trial. Such bullshit. Yep. Weisselberg's son, Barry, who we also know got a lot of shit from this organization, meaning gifts and such, who also worked for the company and his wife, Jennifer Weisselberg, are also on the list of potential witnesses. But they thought they were going to be able to flip this family, and I think they'll sooner spend the rest of their life in prison than yeah, seeing... We'll, than we'll sing. see what Weisselberg does. I mean, that guy that he pled guilty. Yeah. And they can bring the power of the entire sentence against him if he if he fucks this up. So we'll see what happens. All right, everybody, guess what? It's time for the Fantasy Indictment League. First up, Jacob Wall and Jack Berkman pled guilty on Monday. Hopefully their flies were not unzipped in Cleveland to single felony counts of telecommunications fraud for having placed thousands of false robocalls in Ohio that told people they could be arrested or forced to receive a vaccine based on information they submitted in votes by mail. They could each receive a year in prison. When they are now sentenced, they're going to be sentenced on November 29th in Common Pleas Court. They were indicted in October 2020 on numerous counts of telecommunications fraud and bribery. 
The two men were accused of arranging for a voice broadcast service to make 85,000 or so robocalls to predominantly black neighborhoods in Ohio, Michigan, New York, Pennsylvania, and Illinois during the run-up to the 2020 general election. Prosecutors said the pair were responsible for 3,500 calls to residents of Cleveland and East Cleveland, which is why this case was in Cleveland. Cuyahoga County Prosecutor Michael O'Malley, who at the time was the prosecutor when they were charged, he said that they clearly infringed upon the right in a blatant attempt to suppress votes and undermine the integrity of this election. Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost, whose Consumer Protection Unit assisted in the investigation, issued a statement Monday saying voter intimidation won't be tolerated in Ohio. The calls warned people that information included in their mail-in ballots could be used by law enforcement agencies to enforce arrest warrants, collect outstanding debts, and lead to tracking by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention for mandatory vaccinations. So that is preying on black voters. Yes, it is. The men have been sued in federal court in New York City. They face a $5.1 million fine, which is more than Weisselberg had to pay for 15 years of fucking not paying taxes, but whatever. This fine was levied by the FCC. Wool and Berkman are appealing criminal charges filed against them in Detroit, stemming from similar the similar robocall scheme uh, targeting black voters. So these guys, uh, blood guilty. They're facing some jail. November 29th, mark your calendars. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy <laughs> Thanksgiving, indeed. All right. The United States on Monday unveiled charges accusing two Chinese intelligence officers of attempting to subvert a criminal investigation into a China-based telecommunications company. One of the three new cases that the FBI director, Christopher Wray, said shows Beijing is trying to, quote, lie, cheat and steal its way to competitive advantage in technology. Hmm. Yep. In total, the U.S. Justice Department said 10 individuals were Chinese intelligence officers or government officials engaged in criminal conduct. And in the most alarming case, accused two men of working on Beijing's half to bribe a U.S. law enforcement official to share secrets about an ongoing prosecution of a major Chinese firm. Now, although officials did not identify the firm, people familiar with the matter who spoke, of course, on the condition of anonymity to discuss ongoing cases, said it's Huawei Technologies. Am I saying that right? Uh, Huawei, I think. Huawei Technologies, which mm-hmm. is a global communications giant that's been in a years-long battle with the United States over trade secret sanctions and national security concerns. Now, unbeknownst to the two accused Chinese operatives, the law enforcement official, they thought they had successfully bribed, was in fact operating as a double agent, working for the U.S. government, gathering evidence against the two suspects and feeding them false details and documents to win their trust. Well, good for us for finally doing something fucking right. Mm. Now, the other two cases highlight what U.S. officials say is a relentless effort by the Chinese government to both recruit American sources and harass perceived enemies on U.S. soil. An indictment unsealed in New Jersey charged four people, including three alleged Chinese intelligence officers, with conspiring to act as illegal agents on China's behalf using a purported Chinese academic institute to, quote, target, co-opt and direct individuals in the United States to further China's intelligence goals. In a third case, AG, seven individuals were charged with working on China's behalf in a long running campaign of harassment trying to force a U.S. resident to return to China. Part of what U.S. officials say is a broader Chinese strategy of punishing critics who live abroad called Operation Fox Hunt. Hmm. So there's that. Wow. That's um, that is a big deal. Yeah. And and, uh, fucking double agent. I know. Wow. Good job. Good job, Department of Justice, I must say. All right. If you had... PRC spies or Wollen Berkman on your fantasy indictment draft. Give yourself a few points. We'll be right back after this with the good news. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's important to take digital security seriously. I have been fished so many times, phishing attempts on Twitter and in my DMs. But Avast has been a global leader in cyber protection for more than 30 years. They're trusted by over 435 million users. They've prevented over 1.5 billion, with a B, attacks every month. And Avast empowers you with digital safety and privacy, no matter who you are, where you are, or how you connect, and allows you to enjoy the opportunities that come with being connected on your terms. Introducing Avast One. Avast One is their best protection yet. It gives you everything you need to take control of your safety and privacy online. Uh, It's accessible through a single, easy-to-use interface, which I love. Avast's privacy features keep your identity and actions hidden while online while their security solutions stop malware, phishing, and virus attacks. Plus, 
Their performance products clean up and speed up your devices, making your life safer and easier. Avast has a free version that includes all of the essential features, such as the free antivirus, free VPN, and free firewall protection, because everyone deserves to feel safe and secure. Some of my favorite features are the firewall protection, keeps my personal information secure, prevents attacks that seek to access my computer to steal my data, and their ransomware protection is awesome. It secures photos, documents, and other files from being modified, deleted, or encrypted by ransomware attacks, which is huge. So thanks to Avast for supporting the Daily Beans. Confidently take control of your online world with Avast One. It helps you stay safe from viruses, phishing attacks, ransomware, hacking attempts, and other cyber crimes. Learn more about Avast One at avast.com. Everybody, welcome back. It's time for the good news. Who likes good news? Good news, good news. As if a fantasy indictment league drop wasn't good news. We have more listeners submitted good news. And if you have any you want to send to us, including What the Mutt, where we try to guess what breeds make up your beautiful rescue pup, or Find the Cat, where you send a picture and we have to try to find your cat (laughs) because they like to hide. (laughs) Um, I love pets dressed up for Halloween, by the way. I mean, who doesn't? Oh, who doesn't? They're the cutest damn things. Uh, If you have a shout out to somebody who's amazing in your life that you want to do on the podcast, you can send that to us as well. Or some whoopee stories, which I love. I miss those. I feel like we got all the whoopee stories and now everyone's told their whoopee story, but there's got to be more out there. So if you have any of that, send it to dailybeanspod.com and click on contact. First up from David, pronouns he and him. Hi, ladies. A little clarification. Randy Kaufman mentioned on our October 20th episode, suspended his campaign, but did not pull out of the race. He can still win. This is the guy who was handling his junk next to a preschool. Yeah, real class act, class act. Yeah, super cool guy. My wife and he's and he's like to the cop, "You didn't put that in the report, did you?" He's that like, I was yeah, I fucking did. He's like, "Um, uh huh, yeah, huh." It's concerning, My, don't you think, sir? <laughs> don't you think, sir? My wife and I have spent the last several election cycles working with the Maricopa County Community College Faculty Association to get the crazies off the board and replace them with pro education board members. On Friday, my wife sent out 2,500 text messages about this. Thanks, David. Besides all the crude sexual replies, one even said they did not care what he did. They were voting straight Republican. Anyway, if anyone is in Maricopa County, please vote for Kelly Butler for Maricopa Community College Board. That's Kelly with an I, Butler. Local elections matter and they take continuous attention and work. David, yes, they do. Pod tax is Jax as a mummy and a couple more from Africa. Oh, this oh, this is David who went on the African side. Oh, right. Thanks for all you do. Look at this dog. Jax is so cute. I love the eyebrows so much. Oh my God. Is that a gorilla's head in the second picture? Yeah, look at his eye. That's amazing. The eye right there. I gotta go on a safari. I, I gotta get a big camera with a big lens and go on a safari because there's lions and tigers and bears. Look at the kitty. Well, there's no bears, but yeah. Look at the kitty. There's lions and tigers and monkeys. And I know, and this gorilla is so fucking cool. What an awesome shot. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. I don't know. You don't know. There might be bears. All right. This is from Lori, pronouns she and her. Hiya. Last night, my kids heard the tail end of one of your good news segments, which sounded like a song composed as if a dog were singing it. Very amusing. I explained to my kids about your good news bits that are mainly about cats and dogs. They suggested I contribute our good news. So here it is. Our cat, Posey, got very sick a little over a year ago. She's not too old, maybe 10 at the time. Uh, We don't know her actual age as she was a rescue. Anyway, poor Posey developed pancreatitis and lymphoma. She remained sick for many months despite heroic efforts. Just when we broke down to tell the kids we didn't think she was getting any better, she turned the corner. She still needs daily medication, but she appears very happy and like she really feels great. Recently, she even seems to have put back on some of the weight she lost. She's resumed greeting us outside when we get home from being away. She's even gotten a little of her bossy back. Good news indeed. And here is a picture of the kids with the sweet kitty. Oh, it's a great tabby. I had a cat like that named Ned. Of course you did. Just the best cat. <laughs> Ned. Ned. Needle nose Ned. Ned the head. Yeah. So adorable. Thank you for that submission, Lori. Thank you. And thanks to the kiddos for suggesting it. 
from Kelly, pronoun she and her. Hello, Beans Queens. I've been listening since I heard Allison on the Midas Touch podcast. Shout out to the Midas Mighty. I was an instant fan and soon became a patron. I have a small confession and some good news. Well, first of all, Kelly, thank you. This summer, she says, I went on a Mediterranean cruise with my best friend and some extended family. My hope was to unplug from everything going on here for the duration of the trip. I made it two days. The Dobbs decision came down during the trip. And my family kept going on and on about how those crazy Democrats were going to burn the cities down and some such nonsense. I needed a bit of sanity. So while in port during the day, I would download each episode. And every night after dealing with the crazy, I'd go back to my cabin and get my beans fix and a little bit of sanity back. Thank you for helping me survive that trip. The good news is I went to vote today and I took someone with me. Thank you. I have encouraged about five other people to vote as well. I live in Georgia and I'm trying to rally everyone for Warnock. As my pet tax, I have a what the mutt. Walter is my pirate dog and here he is with a pirate costume. Oliver is part Maine Coon and Willow is my sweet young calico. Also included are a couple photos from the trip. Thanks for all you do. Wow. Look at that. I know. Ooh, there's Santorini, one of my favorite places on earth. Oh, it's beautiful. I've never been. Oh, you got to go, AG. It's picturesque. I definitely need to go. First of all, look at this and look at this menagerie. Oh my God. So and the smiling good. pirate dog with the one blue eye. So cute. That picture, the third picture with, oh my <laughs> with God. the smile. What do you suppose? What do we got in here? Blue healer. And blue little, healer, maybe even a little husky. Little chow chow, little husky. Um, lab, lab, maybe. Yeah. Oh, they don't have any answers. No, I guess we're it's right. It's just then. us guessing. We're right. There's Dalmatian in there too. Boom. Let's go. Sweet. All right. <laughs> this next one's from Sue, pronoun she and her. Dear Beans Queens, I'm a new listener, a newer listener, and I wasn't sure about the good news section. Then I realized how much it made me smile, including randomly and repeatedly from the story of three year old at the broken machine asking his grandpa about, is there something to do besides panic? <laughs> That's fair. I love that story. Nearly 30 years ago, my husband and I started our fertility journey. After a few years and facing more extensive procedures, we decided to try foster care, figuring before we spent more money, we should try parenting. (laughs) My husband calls foster care the try before you buy plan. Nice. We started out with a teenager and then we're willing to have more kids. We tease him that he spoiled us for teenagers because we got so lucky with him. The next were way more challenging. Now, this week, he surprised us by showing us the three pages in which he is mentioned in an inspiration in William Shatner's newest book, Boldy Go. I'm so, which is a great name for obviously William Shatner's book. I'm so, quote, mom proud that it outweighs my Trekkie nerd awe. Mm. For pet tax is a photo of my dog, Morpheus. The rescue said he was a Chweenie, a mix we had never heard of. And thought if you have a silly breed name, you needed a big name to counter it. (laughs) You do. That's really (laughs) funny. So Morpheus. Uh, He's great at being what my kids need, even when that is their footrest while studying. Oh, my God. Look at the Chewini. Oh, my God. Morpheus. That's a wonderful name. It's funny because if that dog did not have the foot for a comparison, I would assume it was a large dog. (laughs) Right. Right. So cool. And hey, that's so awesome that he that uh, that he was mentioned three times as an inspiration. I mean, that's awesome. Wow. I would just I would you'd have to pick me up off my fainting couch. Totally. (laughs) First, we'd have to move Lindsay and then pick you up off of it. Yeah, exactly. We'd have to move Lindsay and he'd have to let go of his pearls so that I could clutch them. So you could clutch yours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Next up from David V, pronouns he and him. Please wish me luck. I'm attending the Irma Bombeck Humor Writers Workshop and I'll be performing in a stand up comedy show hosted by Wendy Liebman. Oh my God. We just saw her. She's She's brilliant. Amazing. Uh, when I'm not trying to stand up, uh, when I'm not trying stand up, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> when this guy's no, when David's not trying to stand up or listen to the show. Yeah, when I'm not trying stand up or listening to your show, I'm often writing humor on Medium or trying my hand at TikTok, where I'm doing videos about things I've discovered while cleaning my office. I've enclosed a picture of Johnny, our family dog, a rescue from Texas, who is the perfect little guy for our family. He just turned two this month. He'll even be mentioned in my routine. Look at the baby. Oh, so sweet by the fireplace. Is that a Chewini as well? What did they, did he say? I don't know. That one looks like a bigger dog. Maybe a (laughs) lab pity. 
So beautiful. Indeed. All right. This is from Stella's dad. There's no (laughs) pronouns on Stella's dad. Hi, ladies. This might be a double post. I submitted in the wrong area. I took you up on your suggestion to check voter registrations. While doing mine, I decided to check my whole family. I discovered that my ex-wife drank country music Kool-Aid and her posse is now a registered Republican. Mm. Yep. I have a $50,000 life insurance policy laying around with her name on it. It's now going to my friend, who's also my dog sitter, who absolutely loves my dog and sometimes takes her for the weekend just for fun, even though I'm not going anywhere. Oh my God. Look at this photo. I know. I know. And, and Stella's dad, that is an excellent way to get your family to vote. Seriously. Like, you want to be the person on my life insurance policy or nah? I mean, that's a good way to do it. Because my life insurance only goes to Democrats. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, yeah, but look at this beautiful pupper. I mean, so cute. Oh. And the doggles. This is great. Thank you so much, everyone, for all of your submissions. I'm so happy to be home. I missed, I mean, I didn't, I, 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 so I missed everyone. I missed you, Dana. I missed home and I missed my kitties. So I'm very happy to be back. Uh, although I got to say the White House was really, really, truly an incredible experience. I got to see the portraits of the First Lady, Michelle Obama and Barack. They, they, you know, they're, they're new paintings. So good. That are hanging up in the White House. They're just so amazing in person. Like they're breathtaking. It was just truly a wonderful day. Do you have any final thoughts before we get out? I do. I do. I do. And I'm sorry the final thought isn't a happy one, but the comedy world and the entertainment world Mm -hmm. and AG knows this Mm -hmm. and anyone who loves this man, um, Leslie Jordan died this morning in West Hollywood and um, very, very unexpected um, from what I understand um, from sources close to him and dear friends of mine. He had a heart attack behind the wheel of a car. Uh, there was a medical emergency and they're assuming it was a, a heart attack and the, the car hit a building. And Leslie was 67. He was so young. So young, so loved, so full of life. And so I just want to give a big shout out to Leslie Jordan and every of uh, one of my comedy people and you and anyone who enjoyed his entertainment. I mean, I think everyone knows a role that Leslie did that they loved and he made so many people laugh, especially during the pandemic and decades before. So he's going to be deeply missed, deeply missed. Yes. How many lives he's touched yeah. with his humor. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you for that final thought. And uh, so go hug somebody that you love. You never know. Just go hug someone. Tell them you love tell them. Tell them you love them. Take tell care them. of business. Tell them you love them. And, you know, while we're at it, giving advice. Yes, please. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Take care of the planet. Take care of your mental health. Vote blue over Q. And please take someone with you. And tell your people you love them. I've been A.G. And I've been D.G. And them's the Beans. The Daily Beans is written and executive produced by Allison Gill with additional research and reporting by Dana Goldberg and Amy Carrero. Sound design and editing is by Desiree McFarlane with art and web design by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios. Music for The Daily Beans is written and performed by They Might Be Giants and the show is a proud member of the MSW Media Network, a collection of creator-owned podcasts dedicated to news, politics, and justice. For more information, please visit mswmedia.com. M-S-W-Media.